Okay, let's talk a bit about uh, single sound sources and Doppler. And sometimes you want this huge number of particles with a lot of sound events happening at the same time. Sometimes you simply want a single sound over here or a different sound over there. And for that, you're essentially going to use this choice the, that it's going to add a single point source. It's a single particle that is going to create the, the sound of it. Of course, based with this, we are going to pick up some audio file. For instance, let's pick up this drone kind of sound. Okay, uh, sounds like this. Okay, and the idea is not to use this and eventually add some Doppler kind of sound to it. And actually, a lot of users are really enjoying the Doppler features of the uh, software because since the software needs to model, completely model the propagation of sound in this virtual 3D space, that means that if you are moving particles all of the Doppler, it's automatically generated, uh, the Doppler of it is generated by the engine. So people are really enjoying using this to create Doppler, actually liking the result. So let's create a Doppler. I'm going to, I have this sound. Currently, this is located 20 meters, uh, uh, 10 meters in front of me. Let's place this 300 meters to the right. So essentially, we have the sound over there. And then the idea is to, okay, let's move the sound passing by and cap using the microphone to capture the sound of the sound moving there. And actually the sound particles, there are two ways of handling, um, handling movement. We are going to, I'm going to talk about both of them. Sometimes you, it's better to use one of them. Sometimes you want to use a different one. So let's add this uh, movement and for instance, add this random velocity. In this case, I don't want anything to move in upside down or front back. So essentially I'm going to place a zero in here and I'm going to use only the X axis. So essentially I'm going to place, for instance, minus 100 meters per second. So minus because I don't want from the movement from left to right, I want from right to left. So I'm going to use a negative value and 100 meters per second. So essentially I'm going to get this kind of movement as you can see in here of the, the sound passing by. And with all of this, I simply can render and get the, opt, the result of this Doppler. So as you can see, you get all the Doppler over there. Uh, and it's a different way of thinking about Doppler. You are not thinking about low level parameters like volume, panning, pitch or things like that, you are thinking on a 3D perspective and you say, okay, I want the, this sound source to be moving uh, one, 100 miles per hour and I have the microphone over here and want to capture the sound of this. And eventually you can change all of these Doppler um, uh, characteristics by changing the parameters like the velocity of the sound source, the position of the microphone, because by changing the position of the microphone, you get different kind of sound. So let's change a few of these parameters for you to have a better um, insight of the, the impact they have in Doppler. So this is the, our current Doppler. Okay, so let's change the, the speed, for instance, for something like um, minus uh, 40 meters per second. So essentially it's going to be slower. Okay, and also let's once again place the original value that we have. Okay, and then like I mentioned, if you change the position of the microphone, it's going to be completely different than the Doppler because the, the variation of pitch depends on the variations of the delay of the sound arriving to the microphone. So for instance, imagine that instead of having 20 meters, the path being 20 meter, uh, 10 meters in front of you, let's say for instance, 50 meters in front of you. So essentially you are moving the distance between the the path of the sound and the microphone. And so let's render this. OK, 
Okay, so essentially you can you know, use this and export the audio to use on your project or something like that. But like I mentioned, there is a different way also of using movement and that is using keyframe animation. And keyframe animation actually is the automation of 3D parameters. So essentially I'm going to remove this movement and now I'm going to add a different kind of movement using um, keyframe animation. So essentially I'm going to the automation in here. Currently the only thing that I'm going to be able to automate is the position because this is a point and I don't have any modifiers here. So let's add the point. I'm going to say I'm going to create a keyframe in here. Say okay in the zero I'm going to be as I am right now but I want at the 10 seconds for instance to be uh, on the minus 300 meters. So essentially by changing this value automatically the software creates a new keyframe and then the system is going to interpolate anything between all of this. So essentially I'm going to render this and get movement And by using keyframe animation, you can change things uh, in a different way. For instance, I could come here and using the shift key, place the 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 um, the, um, the keyframes in a different position, which means that I would be able to render a different kind of sound. Okay. So essentially, it's a different way of using Doppler. Uh, to a different way of using mov movement. So you, sometimes you want movement modifiers, sometimes you want keyframe animation. For instance, imagine that in here you want something like uh, the sound to be around almost like there. So essentially you have things that are actually moving on a different position or eventually let's even increase this higher and create this strange kind of movement so essentially imagine that you want this strange kind of Doppler that was created by this kind of movement you simply would be able to render this and get this kind of sound so. okay so essentially this allows you to create different kind of settings and different change things so I hope you enjoyed the knowing more about Doppler and single sources